In this video, we're going to look at the difference of two squares. Let's start with the counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Okay, then let's square these numbers. So when we square a number, we multiply it by itself. So the square numbers are 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 16, 25, and so on. And these keep going into infinity. Now the difference of two squares says if we pick two of these counting numbers, let's pick some small ones to start with. Let's pick 5 and 3. So if we pick 5 and 3, we can add those numbers together, so 5 plus 3, and then multiply that by the difference, 5 take 3, and uh, well let's work this out first. 5 plus 3 is 8, multiplied by uh, 2, which is 5 take 3, 8 times 2 is 16. This is the same thing as squaring those numbers and finding the difference between those numbers. So 5 squared was 25, 3 squared is 9, 25 take 9 is also 16. And this always works for any two numbers you pick. Uh, the sum multiplied by the difference is the same thing as the difference of their squares. So let's just pick another example quickly. Let's pick, uh, let's pick some larger numbers. Let's pick 8 and 5. Okay, so again, sum the, the numbers together. So this is 8 plus 5 and take that difference. This is multiplied by 8, take 5. So 8 plus 5 is 13. Multiplied by 8, take 5 is 3. 13 times 3 is 39. This is equal to if we square 8 and subtract 5 squared, so 64 take 25, and we'll also get 39. So 64 take 25, well 64 take 20 is 44, take 5 is 39. Okay, so this is known as the difference of two squares. If we take the difference of two square numbers, it's equal to the sum of those numbers uh, multiplied by the difference. So in general, we can say that some number a plus some other number b multiplied by that first number, subtract the second number, whatever these numbers are, it, would all, it will always work. This is equal to a squared take b squared. The first number squared, subtract the second number squared. We can prove this algebraically. So if we uh, take these two brackets, a plus b multiplied by a take b, you expand them out. When we expand brackets, we multiply everything in the first bracket by everything in the second bracket. So a times a is a squared. a times negative b is negative ab. Positive b times positive a is positive ab. And then positive b times negative b is negative b squared. Simplifying this, uh, what do you notice about these two middle terms here? Negative ab plus ab. Well, when we have a negative thing, plus that same thing, that will equal zero. So these two terms cancel out and we are left with a squared take b squared. You can also prove this geometrically if you cut out a large square and you label the side of the large square a and cut out a smaller square and label the side of that square b, you can remove that smaller square and you'll notice the area left over must be a squared take b squared and also the side of that larger rectangle will be a subtract b. The side of the large square subtract the side of the small square. And if you look at the little rectangle on the bottom, the side of that, the longer side will also be the long side take the short side, so a take b. Then we can take that little rectangle and line it up with the side of the larger rectangle. And what do you notice about that area of that rectangle? Well, remember the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. The length is a plus b, the width is a take b. So we have the case where we started with an area of a squared take b squared, which is also equal to the area of a plus b times a take b. So that's a geometric proof as well. Let's look at some examples where this is useful. So often you'll be given an expression to factorize. So you can use the difference of two squares to factorize and in some cases simplify algebraic expressions. 
So you might be asked to factorize x squared take 100. A common question is, well, how can I factorize this? There are no common factors. Here you need to use the difference of two squares and notice that x squared take 100 can be written as x squared take 10 squared. And in this case, we have a square number take another square number. I know because I know about the difference of two squares, I can write this as the first thing, x plus the second thing, x plus 10 multiplied by x take 10. Okay, so that's a case where you can factorize an expression that normally we would say we can't factorize because there are no common factors. Okay, another example, you can also have fractions. So x squared take a quarter. Here you need to notice that a quarter is a half squared. So we can write this as x squared take a half squared. And then we can use the difference of two squares. This would be x plus a half multiplied by x take a half. Some more examples, you can have uh, both terms having fractions. So you might have 16 on 49, x squared take uh, 64 on 81, y squared. Okay, you can see this getting a bit more complicated, but here you need to notice all of these are square numbers and I can write this fraction as four on seven uh, multiplied by x and all of that is squared. So if I square each of these, I would get 16 on 49 x squared. The second one I can write as eight on nine multiplied by y all squared. And then once you have something squared, take something else squared, you can write it as that first thing, four uh, x on seven is the same as four and seven x plus the second thing, eight y on nine multiplied by the first thing, 4x on 7, take the second thing. And it's always in that order. Uh, it's always the, you know, the first, the first square number plus the second square number and the first take the second. It's never the other way around because then you'd end up with a different expression. Okay, more examples. You could have a term with a number and an x squared term and then just another number. So here, both of these are squared terms as well. You can rewrite this as 2x all squared, take three squared. And again, you know this is the first thing plus the second thing multiplied by the first thing, take the second thing. So that would be factorizing 4x squared, take nine. A couple more examples here. Uh, you might have something like x take three all squared, take four, okay. Again, this is, well, the first term is something squared. The second term we can write as two squared. And here we have the difference of two squares. There's other ways of doing this. You could expand these brackets and then factorize, but actually this might be a, a slight shortcut because then we can write this as X take three plus two. So this term plus the second term, and then this term X take three take two so subtract the second term and then simplify these brackets. So negative uh, three plus two is negative one and then negative three take two is negative five. So hopefully getting the idea that we can have pretty much anything squared, you can have an expression squared, you can have a number squared, you can have fractions squared. It all works with this difference of two squares. A couple more examples, you might have something like 50y take two y cubed here we don't have anything squared yet. So you need to take a step first before you have the difference of two squares. You need to notice that you can factorize something. Can you see something you could factorize? Uh, you need to see that you can factorize a two y and then in the brackets, you'd be left with 25 take y squared. And then in those brackets, you have the difference of two squares. You could write this as two y multiplied by five squared take y squared and then you can uh, factorize that expression in the brackets. So this would be two y multiplied by five plus y multiplied by five take y. Okay, so that's that expression factorized. And one final example, uh, x to the power four take y to the power four. 
uh, you know what, I'm going to leave this one for you. Can you fully factorize this expression? Uh, and just a hint, if you would like a hint, you need to actually do two lots of the difference of two squares. Uh, and if you get to the final answer, you'll know what I mean by that. Okay, so there we go. There is the difference of two squares, uh, a brief summary and some examples. I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe if you want to see more content. Leave a like if you did find this useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.